This is the handwritten journal of the House of Lords for the 8th of June, 1647. It's a written account of everything that happened in Parliament that day. And it says here, For as much as the feasts of the Nativity of Christ, Easter and Whitsuntide and other festivals commonly called Holy Days have been heretofore superstitiously used and observed, be it ordained by the Lords and Commons in Parliament assembled, that the said feasts of the Nativity of Christ, Easter and Whitsuntide, and all other festival days, commonly called Holy Days, be no longer observed as festivals or Holy Days within this Kingdom of England and Dominion of Wales. Seems extraordinary to us that Christmas and Easter should be viewed in such a way, and that something that seems so harmless to us, like the singing of a carol or the use of holly and ivy as decorations, should have aroused such strong feelings of antipathy passions that led Parliament itself to issue a law about it. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing... In the shadow of Westminster Abbey, I met up with Professor Ronald Hutton at St Margaret's Church to find out just what it was about Christmas that the Puritans so feared. To save us all from Satan's power When we were gone astray they really feared the fact that Christmas was an origins of pagan festival, which is true. There's nothing in the Bible to say at what time of year Christ was born, and there's nothing in the Bible to say that you should celebrate the Nativity religiously. What's more, it had been celebrated religiously by the Roman Catholic Church all through the Middle Ages, and also this is a Puritan revolution. It's not business as usual. It's a regime which has come through the bloodiest and worst civil war in our entire history and is there to remake England, Wales and Cornwall in preparation for the second coming of Christ. And to tolerate the wrong belief is literally soul-destroying. It's destroying your chances of salvation and those of uh, the people who depend on you. Did priests and churches ever actually openly defy the ban? Oh, you bet. Here, for example, at St Margaret's Westminster, St Margaret's is right outside the doorway of the House of Commons and in blatant defiance of the ban upon Christmas the people who controlled St Margaret's put up holly and ivy in the church and decorated for Christmas not just having prayers, not just having a service but actually blazoning Christmas all over the interior of the church to the fury of the MPs who had the uh, church wardens here arrested. Puritans believed that songs composed by man should never be sung in church only the Old Testament Psalms, which they thought were divinely inspired, were allowed. The Bible was at the heart of the church, not decoration or ritual. It was a place to hear scripture read and preached. What they really loathed and feared were things that took people's minds away from the Bible and from the sermon, like music that would engage the senses and stop people listening to the word. Puritans believed that psalms should be chanted in what they thought was the old-fashioned Israelite way. It's Catholics who like music in churches. That's why Puritans hate organs in churches, as well as what we'd now regard as hymns. So it seems that the Puritans did tolerate Christmas carols just as long as they weren't sung in church. And surprisingly, even the most famous Puritan of all was fond of the occasional sing-along. Take Oliver Cromwell, who's stereotypical Puritan warrior. Cromwell loved dancing, music, and really silly party games in his private life. But to have those things brought anywhere near worship...